A retired Sussex priest has been jailed for six and a half years today for sexually abusing a string of young men, including a boy of 14. Vickery House from Hand Cross near Crawley carried out the abuse in the 1970s and 80s. Three of his victims were also assaulted by the disgraced former Bishop of Lewis, Peter Ball. This afternoon, Sussex police released a letter of apology that Bishop Peter Ball sent to one of Vickery House's alleged victims in 1984, showing he knew about his friend's behaviour decades before they were both brought to justice. John Young reports from the Old Bailey. He arrived at court luggage in tow, knowing he faced prison for offences in the 70s and 80s against three young men and a 14-year-old boy. Do you have a, a message for your victims, Reverend? Do you accept that you did anything wrong? Do you accept that you did anything wrong? Any apology? Any apology? In court, House's defence barrister said he was profoundly sorry, ashamed, distressed he may have hurt other people. I think the reputation of the church is, is uh, under severe question at the minute. I think that uh, Chichester, um, that while they are uh, saying that they are reviewing and reflecting on their practice, they still have a lot of questions to ask themselves. House now becomes the second Sussex cleric to be sentenced in barely three weeks. He helped Peter Ball, the former Bishop of Lewis, to run special events for young people, filmed for a documentary here. Earlier this month, Ball was given a two-year, eight-month sentence after admitting molesting some of them. But did the two men work in league with each other? A letter released today shows that the bishop was aware of allegations against House in the mid-80s. A young man had written to him saying he'd been abused, and he replied, I'm sad beyond words and wished I'd known sooner. He went on to apologize as sincerely and deeply as I know how. He also told the young man he had taken those steps to ensure nothing like it happens again, but the following year it did. There is no evidence that action was taken by Peter Ball after receiving that letter, so there is no evidence that Peter Ball passed that on to other members of the church. So that surely is an offence of some sort? I can't answer at the moment, we'd have to look at that in further detail. Sussex has been a hot spot of clerical abuse for decades, and we've had former bishops that have interfered with inquiries and also been abusers themselves. The judge today said she took into account the good work House had done helping vulnerable people at this church in Brighton, for example, but said that her sentence must reflect that he was an abuser who had hidden behind a cloak of religion. Uh, well, John Young is live at the Old Bailey. Uh, John, the police were in court. Um, what have they had to say tonight? Polly, I think the police uh, suspect that many viewers may be losing track, frankly, of these cases of clerical abuse in Sussex. But the message they want to get across is if, this, if these cases are triggering memories, they want people to get in touch with them. They will, they say, look into other cases that may emerge. The police have not come entirely well out of this. Devon police, for example, in 2001 were told by one of the victims that House had molested him. They did nothing about it. The judge made clear she was not impressed with that. Sussex Police tonight are making clear they don't want that to happen again. They will listen. Thanks, John. Well, Vickery House has become the 11th man connected with the Church of England in Sussex who's proven to have committed sexual abuse. They include two bishops, Peter Ball, who was jailed for 32 months earlier this year, and George Bell, who died before facing justice. Also, Canon Gordon Rideout. He was jailed for 36 offences against 16 children, most of them at a children's home in Crawley in the 1960s and 70s. And priest Roy Cotton, who was allowed to continue working in the Diocese of Chichester in the 1970s and 80s, despite being convicted of sexually abusing a boy in 1954. Well, the Bishop of Horsham, Mark Sowerby, is the man in charge of safeguarding, safeguarding for the Church of England in Sussex today. This afternoon, I asked him if there had in fact been a cover-up. No, I don't think the church did know what was going on. I don't believe there has been a cover-up, nor collusion. But nonetheless, there were 11 people, at least, yes. who did carry out abuse yes. in the Diocese of Chichester. Now, at the very least, that shows that there was a culture that allowed that to happen. Yes, I think we have to concede that that, that it happened. Um, that culture, I believe, has changed very considerably uh, since, at least since the uh, earliest days of this. Um, so we're not, we're not in the same place we were, but we concede that things were wrong, that responses when people came forward were inadequate, 
um, and we believe that that is now significantly better. Because I think the point that I'm trying to get at is that George Bell, who was a revered figure within the church, mm -hmm. it's now acknowledged carried out abuse. Peter Ball, who was a revered figure within the church, carried out abuse. They were senior figures within the clergy in Sussex. Did their positions allow them to have an atmosphere whereby other abusers were able to come to the church and whether it was a, a deliberate policy or whether it was simply by turning a blind eye, those other abusers were allowed to carry on? I've got no evidence that uh, any of the bishops has knowingly allowed other people to abuse. Clearly we have to acknowledge that uh, Bishop Peter Ball uh, committed criminal offences um, and that's a, so a source of uh, profound, profound regret. It's a, sa it's a source of uh, shame to us um, and those who do abuse other people uh, cause not only enormous distress to their victims, uh, but also uh, to those who are betrayed uh, by them, to the trust that is knocked in other people. Bishop, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, earlier this month, the Archbishop of Canterbury announced that there will be an independent review into Bishop Peter Ball's crimes. The church says that the findings will be made public, but no dates have yet been set. And you can see more of my interview with Bishop Sowerby on our Facebook page.